All right, we've got Kevin Lacey here. He's our Alberta director, and he just published a column in the uh, Calgary Sun talking about Alberta's referendum on the federal equalization program. I'm just going to quote straight from the piece. Here's what it is. Quote, since equalization was created, Albertans have received less than 0.02% of all equalization payments. The last penny paid to Wild Rose Country from equalization was all the way back in 1965. All right, before we jump into the whole mess that is the equalization program, Kevin Lacey, what is the damage? How much does equalization cost the average Albertan? Well, it's a big bill. And you got to consider when we talk about this money, just how what a rough time Albertans have had in the last six and a half years. We've had depression in the oil sector. You know, in 2016, we had over 100,000 oil sector jobs, energy related jobs um, that were lost. It's a big number. And so these costs on top of uh, already damaged economy are huge. When you look at how much equalization costs, take a look at what it costs the average Albertan. So the average Albertan pays in about $650 into equalization. If you count that for a family of four, that's about $2,600 per family of four in the equalization. That's a lot of money that could be going into programs in Alberta, lower taxes, um, or things that can help right here at home that are instead going to fund things uh, in provinces like Quebec. Uh, if you look at, you, know, you mentioned from back from 1965, but you look at the overall number of money that's paid to in equalization, it goes back to about $67 billion um, that's paid out. And this year alone, um, taxpayers will shell out about $2.9 billion uh, in equalization um, each and every year. And that number is going to go up until eventually it's, if it's renegotiated in 2024. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We often talk about the billion dollar numbers, and it's important to talk about the billion dollar numbers. But I know for me, when I first started looking at equalization, this was a number of years ago, when I realized it was about 500 bucks each at that time, 500 bucks is a lot of money. A lot of us could do a lot of things with 500 bucks. And it doesn't seem to do too much good. But let's go back. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. It's easy to get kind of wrapped up in the details here. Now we know the cost is about 650 bucks per Albertan. What is equalization? Well, what, what it is and then what it's supposed to be are actually two different things. So what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to be a way for provinces to, equally, to equal out um, the, the services that you get so that if you get a service in Alberta, it's similar to a service somewhere else uh, in the rest of the country. That was the intention when equalization put in and people like Peter Lougheed and Alberta Premier agreed to it. But since that time, since equalization has become part of our constitution, it's become really about much more than that. And really it's a slush fund um, to other provinces, particularly in Quebec. So we about 20.9 billion is the total envelope of money that goes to equalization. About 13 billion of that um, goes, uh, goes to Quebec. And that money um, goes to all kinds of things that are not related to, equalizing, to having equal services uh, across Canada. Um, things like it's funded uh, subsidies to Bombardier. Uh, it's, it's had subsidies to a blimp company in Quebec. Nova Scotia spent money um, for things like a shipyard in, in Halifax. Uh, Quebec even funded the adult film industry um, with money like this. So it's really, I think, well, one of the issues Albertans have is that we spend this money, we give it to Ottawa, Ottawa gives it to other provinces, but we don't really get any say in how that money is spent. Uh, here in Alberta, for example, we will have a provincial election at some point. When that a provincial election comes, they'll be able to pass judgment on the spending and the decisions of the Conservative Party and the, and the Conservative government and what they've done. We don't get to have the same say when we give money to inequalization that goes to other provinces that then in turn waste it. Yeah, that's such a fundamental difference. If you were sending 650 bucks to somebody who needed it in another province, that'd be one thing. But you're not sending it to that person. You're sending it to their government. You think about it, like if, you're, if your cousin was helping you out, would you want them to send the money to the government? doesn't seem like the best, most efficient way to do it. But okay, here's the thing that you've been up at night working on. 
We've got a referendum happening in Alberta on the equalization question. It's one of the first tangible steps uh, that we've seen in a long time on the equalization issue. What is the point of this referendum? What is happening there? Well, the biggest point, I think the biggest reason for having a referendum is to allow Alberta to have a say and to put their foot in the ring and say that we're not gonna take this anymore, what's going on with this equalization program. One of the reasons why this whole thing is being debated right now is that in 2018, the federal government made a decision um, that they were gonna unilaterally extend the equalization program to 2024. What, uh, that what Alberta is saying now is that let's show Ottawa that this is not just an issue amongst academics. This is not just an issue at the premier's table, that this is an issue at our kitchen tables, that we don't wanna see our money uh, going to Ottawa to spend, to be wasted in other provinces. And we've tried negotiating. We've tried having premiers, having news conferences and complaining about it. We have, uh, it, it doesn't even matter which government. This happened with both NDP and conservative governments of both uh, main complaints, but Ottawa doesn't listen. Uh, so they're either hard of hearing, but I think the, the I would put it more fundamentally that Ottawa needs to be shown that act, real Albertans care about this and that they're willing to go to the polls and make a stand about it. Only, that is the only way that we're ever gonna get real reform as we start to head into the negotiations in 2024. Yeah, I'll never forget that extension of the equalization program. It was in a footnote in the federal budget. It wasn't even a budget line. They just had a footnote on it. That's how little they cared about it and how little they thought that the rest of us care about it. This, uh, this, this uh, referendum is a way to say, hey, no, that's not good enough. You can't just extend a multi-billion dollar program that takes our money, sends it somewhere else uh, without accountability and without a conversation. Okay, but so let's start that conversation. And this is such a funny question. With most programs, it's pretty automatic. You ask a question, is the program working? And you get a, perhaps a debatable answer, but at least you get some kind of answer. But let me put it to you on this one. Is equalization working? Well, no. And, and I think the biggest marker for that is that you have provinces like Quebec that have been on the program for over 60 years. If you had a program that was paying someone or a province for that period of time, wouldn't you not begin to examine uh, what the formula was, what the markers were in that program and the goals? Um, if equalization is working to, e to make an equal playing field across Canada, surely by now, after all this money, provinces would be getting their act together um, and uh, they would be reforming what's going on to ensure that their standard of living or their incomes were up to what Alberta was. So no, I don't think Alberta, I don't think equalization is working. I think quite the opposite. I think the numbers and the amount of time these provinces have been on it uh, really speak to how equalization hasn't worked and created some disincentives um, within those provinces to succeeding. Well, and I think it's even deeper than that in a sense that nobody's even checking the score. Like if you ask federal politicians or bureaucrats, what are the metrics that show you whether equalization is working or not? They look at you like you've got two heads. The question doesn't even make sense to them, let alone the answer. But I want to get into this a little bit further. I'm from Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan got equalization for a long time. You're in Alberta now, but like many Albertans, uh, you're originally from Nova Scotia. So both of us have some history in provinces that received equalization for a long time. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people in those provinces think that equalization is good for the province. That hasn't been my experience. What's your take on that? No, the, it's the rules that have really held provinces back. You know, just to pick on, or just to talk about Nova Scotia for a little bit, you know, some, when you look at the entire envelope of federal transfers to the province, it funds somewhere between around 35% of the total budget uh, in that province. Um, but when that money, then the government has no accountability or rules for how equalization dollars are spent. Um, so you see things like money to companies that go bankrupt or, or to fund companies um, that compete against other corporations in other provinces. Um, for example, the Nova Scotia government I mentioned earlier funded a shipbuilding uh, uh, shipbuilder in, in Nova Scotia 
that is competing for projects against a shipbuilder in British Columbia. Uh, and they're using federal dollars that are given to them by, uh, by the federal government in order to compete with them. So they're, we're co actually competing now using these federal dollars to compete against one another. But I think the biggest one is with regards to natural resources, uh, because the way this, the formula works is that natural resource development as part of the formula, um, any, any taxes you collect as a result of development, that is clawed back in equalization. So there's no incentive. Um, to exploit these resources. That's why you have situations in Quebec where the premiers throw up their hands and they say, why would I fight with environmentalists? Why would I fight with uh, uh, in the public sphere to exploit Canadian energy when I can just receive the same tax revenue I'd be getting from natural resources and equalization payments? It doesn't make any sense. So it's these types of in these inequities that need to be corrected. And we need to give voice to those concerns when the, the program is renegotiated in 2024. I think that's such an important part of the conversation. I look in Saskatchewan, for example, it is frustrating because I, ultimately it would cost me 650 bucks a year uh, in equalization. I've got a family of six, big enough. Uh, I hate the idea of all of that money leaving the province and us not getting really any value for it. But I tell you what, I do not want Saskatchewan to go back to a time when we got equalization money. It's bad when we're the ones paying, but it was even worse when we were the ones getting it because basically Ottawa was paying us to have bad policies and you get what you pay for. We got a lot of bad policies. That's what ultimately happened. Okay, listen, in politics, cynicism is probably the driving force 98% of the time. Let's just be honest about that. And there's a lot of cynics uh, with the referendum saying, ah, it doesn't matter, you can vote, doesn't matter, nothing will ever change, nothing has ever changed with equalization, who cares about this? Why are the cynics wrong? You're staying up at night, working your tail off on this referendum. What do you say to those cynics? Well, what I would say is that you can't keep doing, if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll keep getting what you're getting. And we need to do something new and to try something new in order to get Ottawa to listen. So all of the uh, critics who claim that we can simply send news releases or have our premiers go to the negotiating table and make the case, um, all of these things have been tried over the years um, and they haven't worked. That's where we're, we're in the situation we are in today. What this referendum is really about is about empowering Albertans to show politicians that we actually care. And that's why it's so important to get a strong yes vote um, is because in order to show that we need to give the power of politicians, no matter who's in the, who's in the uh, uh, premier's chair, um, that this is an issue that Albertans care about. Um, this happened with Senate reform years ago um, when uh, Alberta made a decision to hold a Senate elections, uh, eventually because they disagreed with having uh, political cronies being appointed to the Senate. Those senators were given seats in the Senate to represent and uh, Alberta. Um, so this strategy is not anything new, but it is a strategy and it's one arrow in the quiver uh, to give our politicians of any political stripe to get a better deal for Alberta. Well, you got to get off the couch. We've tried the complaining strategy. Like <laughs> lots of us have been complaining about yeah. equalization for like, I don't know, since before I was born. Uh, complaining doesn't seem to get anything done. I think it's time to get off the couch and at least mark an exit in a ballot. Okay, but we can't talk politics without uh, some kind of speculation here. Like, let's just, I mean, the horse race is always part of it. We try to talk about policy mostly, but let, let's have a little bit of fun. Uh, what's your gut say, man? The vote's uh, coming up October 18th. That's the vote. That's when the rubber meets the road. Uh, what's your gut on it? Uh, I think it's going to be close. I think, unfortunately, the referendum, uh, many of the opponents, um, of the yes side uh, want to make this about a provincial politician or other policies or their ability to manage um, the province's finances. All of those are interesting debates and debates that certainly our group will be having after October 18th. Um, but as a result, I think we're going to have a close vote, which is why anyone listening to this who lives in Alberta uh, to get out and vote and make your voice heard on October 18th and vote yes. Um, so that we don't have uh, the few special interests or unions um, controlling this vote uh, and co-opting it for their own interests, which are not really what this is about. This is really about getting a better deal uh, for Alberta from the federal government. 
October 18th in Alberta, vote yes on the referendum uh, question. We've got to send a message. If we stay on the, uh, on the couch, don't mark a ballot, you're basically telling Ottawa, hey, go for it. Keep extending equalization, keep expanding, it's no big deal to us. It's just, uh, we've got to put that X on the ballot. Kevin Lacey, Alberta Director, thanks so much for your work on this, man. Thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Scott Hennig, President of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. If you've got another minute, I'd like to ask you to think about the one person you know that would really enjoy listening to this podcast. Do us a favor and do them a favor and send them a quick note to let them know about it. At the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we believe there is power in numbers. That's why we've worked so hard to build an army of taxpayers who are ready to push back. And we did it because people like you shared our work with that one person that they knew would really appreciate taking part. Thanks for listening. And thanks for doing your part to make Canada a better place.